Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Indigo Asim, and my SYP is on women in comedy. I started this project because I love humor and I love to laugh. So I'm going to talk about what I learned today, and I hope to make you guys laugh also, or I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. So um, when I started this project, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but these two questions were running through my mind, so I'm going to ask you guys them now. What does being a feminist mean? So feel free to answer. Good answer. Um, the dictionary definition is the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men, which basically means believing and supporting gender equality, kind of like you said. Um, the second question isn't that easy either. Um, can a woman be funny and beautiful? And you guys can answer that also. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Good answer. Um, so as I started my research, I actually one day in class when we first started talking about my topic, one classmate kind of just summed up my project as being women aren't as funny as men. And that was kind of something that kind of like fueled me to really want to like change people's opinions because it was kind of hard to believe that people still think that, but a lot of people do. So when I started my research, I found an article by a writer named Christopher Hitchens, and this is him. Um, the article was called Why Women Aren't Funny, and it was published in a 2000, 2007 issue of the magazine Vanity Fair. It kind of talked about why he thinks socially it's more important for a man to be funny in order to get ahead in life. He sees humor as, as an unattractive quality for a woman to have. Uh, I think this quote kind of sums up his opinions and the article. In any case, my argument doesn't say that there are no decent female comedians. There are more terrible female comedians than there are terrible male comedians. But there are some impressive ladies out there. Most of them, though, when you come to review the situation, are hefty or dykey or Jewish or some combo of the three. So I read this, and I was just like, ah, what is going on with the sky? And it, this article also kind of fueled my research and wanting to change people's opinions on this. So I wanted to start with kind of the history of female comedians, and I wanted to research some pioneers. So I started with Phil Stiller. She was a stand-up comedian that got her start in the 50s. Her jokes were um, self-deprecating, and she was kind of famous for wearing these big, glamorous, and like zany costumes. Um, as I said, she started working in the 1950s, and she was famous for telling her jokes in a rapid-fire manner. My favorite joke that I found by her was her jokes were set up in a payoff and setup style. So my favorite like one liner by her was, I was asked out by Burt Reynolds once. I was in his room. <laughs> so she was kind of silly and her jokes were really fast. So whatever like time however long her set was, she was kind of got a lot of big laughs every couple of seconds. Uh, she wanted to people to see her differently from that time period's perception of a woman. Um, most characterizations of women on, in TV and film were mothers and housewives and kind of one-dimensional and flat. So she tried to change what a woman could look like or say or do. Her jokes were self-deprecating, but her style would make people pay attention to her humor and make them kind of desensitized to the cliche women that were, they were used to seeing. Um, so Phil Stiller really changed standards and really helped put female stand-up comedians on the map. Uh, the second, kind of another half of comedy is sketch comedy and improvisational comedy. So another woman I studied was Elaine May. She also got her start in the 50s. She came from an improv group called uh, the Compass Players, which was started at the University of Chicago in 1955. In this comedy group, she met a man named Mike Nichols. They became an improvisational comedy duo. Elaine May was really funny and witty and really quick in her style of comedy. She was also considered very attractive and a lot. some people found this disarming. Um, Richard Burton, the British actor, said after meeting her, Elaine was too formidable, one of the most intelligent, beautiful, and witty women I had ever met. I hoped I would never see her again. 
Um, they were a very special duo because they really knew how to work off of each other on stage, kind of coming from nothing or just getting inspiration from the audience. And they really worked well together. I have um, a clip of one of their more famous sketches called Mother and Son. So I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of it. Hello. Hello, Arthur. This is your mother. Do you remember me? <laughs> Mom, I was just going to call you. Is that a funny thing? You know that I have my hand on Arthur, the phone. you were was... supposed to call me last Friday. Oh, honey, I know. I just didn't have a second and I could cut my Arthur, throat. I was. I sat I... by that phone uh, all day Friday. Uh, honey, I was working. I and all day I, Friday night. Dolly, I was in the lab. And all day Saturday. Mom, I, I, and I, all day Sunday. Mom, and I, your father finally said to me, Phyllis, eat something, you'll faint. <laughs> I said, no, Harry, no. I don't want my mom to be full with my son. <laughs> so that kind of is a really good example of how they work together. Um, they were improv comedians and they did sketch comedy and Carol Burnett is another really good example of a woman who really who was a trailblazer for this type of comedy. The Carol Burnett show premiered on September 11th in 1967 and it ran for 278 episodes. It was a variety and sketch comedy show and it featured her in a lot of the sketches and there was a troupe of actors and a troupe of writers. They this is another example of working really well together, kind of off of nothing, and coming up with things on the spot. Because while the sketches are written, the actors on the show frequently like um, improvised lines or added jokes on the spot. She was famous for her another person who wore really cool costumes and kind of had a really cool setup for her act. Um, she had something called the Tarzan Yell, which she did in a lot of her shows, and she had a segment where she talked to the audience. Um, the Carol Burnett Show is also the first show to do parodies of commercials, which is something that continues today and SNL does one almost every week. I have a clip from the show that kind of shows her doing the Tarzan <laughs> This is from the show and one of the Q&A segments. Of course! So she was very important because she kind of helped run the show and um, was in so many of the sketches and the show was very popular and it really helped pave the way for other sketch comedy and variety shows like SNL and Mad TV. She also included a lot of songs in her like shows and act, but that would kind of die along with the show, but the style of sketch comedy would continue. Um, so I wanted to learn about the history of comedy, but I, of women in comedy, but I also wanted to explore some of the stereotypes and stigma that exists today. So I took, I talked to my friends and family and I took a survey. And it was about 58 people, and here are the questions. Can a woman be both funny and beautiful? Socially speaking, is a sense of humor more of an asset to women or to men? Which gender is funnier in general, men or women? Describe the kind of humor or joke, describe the kind of jokes or humor that appeal to you, and do you have any favorite female comedians? Please name them. Um, most people responded yes to the first question, a woman can be funny and beautiful, which was good. Um, but I found, that the second question, th most people described that um, it was better for men to be funny than women. And these are some of the responses. Women, which is sad because there are constantly jokes being made about women and how awful women are. But you know, those are just jokes. Because society places more importance on appearances in women, a sense of humor is more of an asset to men, even though I do not agree with that. I think. In either case, it's helpful against conforming to norms and the stereotypes of the gender, but women can't just be funny, whereas funny men don't have to do anything else to be socially acceptable. It should be equally important, but unfortunately, society places more value on men with a sense of humor. I thought it was interesting that even though everyone agreed that a woman could be funny and beautiful, 
they thought even if she was, it could still be detrimental to the way she was perceived and that even if a man was funny, if, it's better for a man to be funny because it won't really hurt him and it can help him be so socially acceptable. Um, another question, everyone answered um, that a lot of their female, favorite female comedians were Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and those were two of the most popular answers. Um, they are both writer performers who came from SNL and now have their own, both of them have had or had their own two popular television shows which they either wrote and helped produce and starred in. Um, the success of Tina Fey and Amy Poehler made possible the emergence of female ensemble comedies on the big screen like Bridesmaids, which was the first of its kind to earn more than $100 million at the box office. Um, this was written by another writer-performer, Kristen Wiig, and another writer. She came from SNL and wrote this movie, and it was very popular. Uh, an important scene in the movie is actually the scene where Maya Rudolph poops in the street. She pooped for all female comedians of the 21st century, and the scene is now recognized as a scene that changed the film industry. Um, when they wrote the scene, her and, or when they filmed it, her and a producer, Judd Apatow, kind of was worried that the scene was too gross and that people might not like it because, you know, it's women uh, ensemble comedy, and it was kind of considered that women couldn't do this type of really gross humor. Um, more writer-performers are now in the spotlight, like Mindy Kaling. Um, she has her own show on Fox, which premiered in September, called The Mindy Project. Um, she recently said in an interview, I'm a minority, chubby woman with my own television show on a network. I don't know how long this is going to last. This brings to mind the short-lived TV show All American Girl, which starred stand-up comedian Margaret Cho, which featured a woman of color in the starring role, but was canceled after a season of low ratings and criticisms of stereotyping Asian culture. Um, another woman, um, Amy Schumer, recently got her own sketch comedy show on Comedy Central about two weeks ago called Inside Amy Schumer. It, um, she writes, produces, and stars in the program, and she was a stand-up comedian, so a lot of the jokes and humor are based off of her own act. She, her style of humor is also very raunchy, so she joins a tradition that includes women like Joan Rivers and Chelsea Handler. Their style of aggressive humor challenges female stereotypes about humor. Um, for example, the comic essayist Fran Lebowitz has written, Humor is largely aggressive and preemptive, and what's more male than that? Um, as one, something that I've learned from all of my research is that female comedians have obviously come far. Women have always been funny and, and always have been, have been, are funny and always have been, but society has yet to fully accept that fact and kind of stop marginalizing them for their appearance and the content of their jokes. So. Um, although poets such as Rudyard Kipling disagree, for the female species must be deadlier than must be deadlier than the male. Leibowitz may be on to something. Um, in closing, as the comedian Elaine Boosler has observed, when women are depressed, they either eat or go shopping. Men invade another country. Uh, thank you for listening to my SYP. Kind of an observation. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on. Um, you, you, very near the end, you mentioned um, the quote that somebody was quoting in response to um, women not being afraid to be raunchy or uh, or vulgar. Um, but what I've kind of seen is like with, um, like the Maya Rudolph thing and um, Margaret Cho is very raw and Sarah Silverman. I get. I, I'm getting the impression that it's not it's not a unique thing for women to be raunchy or vulgar anymore. Now it's kind of like I'm not surprised by women being you know, like having that style of, of comedy humor. I'm wondering if that's well, I don't know, I guess I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that in terms of is, is that a, is raunchiness the direction that we want to go or what do you think? Um I Wait, I'm a little confused by your question. My question is, 
women comedians may have initially seemed like raunch is the domain of men, and so so many women comedians have now stepped into that. It's not a novelty anymore. It's not interesting. So, I guess what is what is the where do women go from here in comedy? Because the raunch has been done. Um. I think that, I mean, the female comedians are pretty much open to do like anything in their like style of humor, but they still, as I mentioned, aren't like fully accepted and just like there aren't a lot of like examples or just in comedy, they're still marginalized and kind of stuck with the tag of female comedian, female comedian, no matter like what um, they're actually saying or what their jokes are about. So I think like the scene in Bridesmaids, they were just kind of worried that like such a big movie, like that scene would put people off because it's still some people or a lot of people are still kind of put off or kind of like, I don't really want to see a female comedian. So even though they have done it, it still kind of can hurt them sometimes. Uh, when you were putting together your project um, and you were researching different female comedians, did you uh, come across someone who stood out to you and was your particular favorite? And if so, why? Um, I read about a lot. Uh, I liked um, Elaine Boosler a lot. Um, a female comedian that I found that I wish was like more popular now was a comedian named Marsha Warfield. And she was kind of famous in the 80s. She played a security guard or like a, a person on the television show Night Court. And I watched some of her stand up and I thought she was really funny. And I kind of liked the way she told her jokes. She had her own stand up, TV, not stand up, just like television show in the 80s, but it flopped. And I kind of wish she was like still popular because I thought she was really funny. I was thinking about Ellen DeGeneres and how she has broken a lot of barriers too, especially for the for the you know the gay population. And, and um, I just wondered if um, I don't know what are there other other ways that women still can, uh, you know, it sort of relates to Matt's question too, that, you know, there's still women in comedy are still sort of breaking, breaking down other stereotypes or, or barriers for people uh, in terms of what can be funny or what, I don't know, was she one of the people that you looked at as well? Yeah, I researched a lot about her. She was kind of a part of the, like, alternative, like, comedy movement in, like, the 90s and her like stand up and her television show was also really important and how she came out as a character on the show and in real life. So she did a lot of her, um, she was really groundbreaking as well and kind of a true reason. Um, what is your Jim Gaffigan, who's completely clean and very, very popular, and Ventura. There are different venues for male comedians. I think one of the things you're showing is that for women now, also, a woman can be raunchy, can be outrageous, can be feminist, can be whatever she wants to be. And do um, you feel that, whereas in your survey, people still were feeling that male comedians the advantage or perceived more positively, do you feel like the, the, the trend of the movement is, is changing for women? Um, I feel like now is a really good time for female comedians. Like a lot of you know female comedians have their own show, like I mentioned, Mindy Kaling and people like that. And there, it's like a good time period now. And a lot of the opinions and perceptions are still changing. So I think this is like a good time and I think like the movement of female comedians is 
you know, continually being positive, and I think it'll continue to get better. Is one of the things that um, that has influenced women having their own shows and all of that the fact that mostly men are in charge of the the networks and the make all those money decisions in terms of uh, who gets a show and how long you get keep going before you can did you did you run across any kind of uh, information um, like that? Yeah. Uh, I read about um, Kathy Griffin in the 90s. She pitched a TV show that would just be about four different female comedians. And um, I can't remember exactly which network, but they were just kind of like, that's not really going to work. Like, I don't really think that would be a popular show. Even all four of the female comedians or whoever they could have been were all popular and you know had success. Sometimes they just don't give them the opportunity which is why I mentioned earlier, now people, female comedians are getting a lot of opportunities or, and writer performers are now. because more women are getting into those producer and money roles? Maybe? Yeah, the, like I said, like the writer okay. performers, yeah. yeah. She like produced and wrote and star. So since she had control, she was able to do what she wanted. And Amy Poehler as well, her television show Parks and Rec is really popular and she features a lot of female comedians. And it's a really popular television show. can find that it follows kind of a trend sort of like worldwide and that as kind of like humanity evolves, I think people are becoming more equal. Um, there are more women in, in positions of political power. Um, with, uh, like Margaret Thatcher and Angela Merkel are the prime minister and uh, head of state of their of countries. And um, the rise of women in comedy is kind of symbolic of I, I agree with you on that. So how did doing senior year project um, change you as a student or as a person? Did you learn anything about yourself by doing the senior year project? Um, uh, I'm like, I like knew this before, but I'm like kind of bad with time management and uh, but I kind of discovered that like I can write about things that I like. One, if I'm more interested in what I'm writing or researching, it's definitely gonna like fuel my work ethic for the project or whatever I want to do. Um, I'm going to Emerson College and I'm studying cinematography. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you.